Okay, I think we are live right now. Um, it is Groovy Dominoes. I don't have my blue shirt because, well, we ran out of blue shirt in the closet. But, yeah, welcome to the stream if you're watching. So, I'm gonna be analyzing the uh, music theory of B because no one else would. So, let's start off for how I got the idea, because I, I think this is really interesting to me. So, I got the idea from a video called It's Minecraft B Hours. So, it's just a cute video that I found on the internet in my recommendations, but um, this is basically it. It even has, so, in this video, it has this cute little B drawing. And it even has a cute little music, if you listen. So I saw this video in about like 2019. And around 2020, I decided, hey, maybe I should make something like this just for fun. So I started thinking. And I think I did... I did the drawing of B first before I made the music, so let me show you the process of how I made the the B character. So actually, I am not a uh, drawing, a visual artist, so I actually used the reference to draw the B, and let me show you the reference. The reference is not stolen off from somebody else. It's actually... It was actually um, my own reference. So let me show you. Oh, it's over here. So... Right, Roblox Studio is open. So yes, I made the model first in Roblox Studio because I could not get the uh, proportions right. So I made this model over here, and then I set the angle, and then what I did is I just drew over this. So as you can see, it's pretty much the same exact thing as you can see over here. So yeah, that's how I made the image of B, and as you can see, it's a cute little B. And actually, as you as you all may know, in this first B video the head is black and I changed that because I realized I, I realized that uh, the head of the bee is actually yellow and not black so I'm that's a mistake over there that I fixed in I uh, first fixed in B Christmas I started using the yellow version and so here it is so yeah um, the black one we don't talk about that. Also, don't put that. Do, do not put that coat out of context. Okay, I'm talking about the B. The color of the B is wrong, basically, and that does not have anything to do with politics or whatever. Anyways, so I made the the uh, I drew the B, and now it's time to start making the music. So the music, of course. Out of all things where I had the idea of the music of B, I had it in the shower where everything goes, every, every idea pops in my head. So, in B, as you can see here, the original, uh, the original inspiration source, I would call it. So as a musician, you would already hear the resemblance of this to B, which is this one. It, they have very similar chords, or if not the same chords. So this one goes, let me just listen. So yeah, it, it does have the same chords. And that's in the key of G. So that's actually a... Uh, this one's also very common in jazz. This is the uh, uh, two five one 
and an extra six. So it's wait. Actually, let me let me listen. So it goes like it goes like. made a mistake there but doesn't matter so yeah it, it goes like boom dang boom boom dang and when I was making when I had the idea for the B music I did not consciously think about that so it's kind of like a s unconscious um inspiration idea thingy you know but but yeah it's basically the same thing if like if I transpose it to A sharp, which is the B key, oh wait, <laughs> as you can see, it's pretty much the same thing. It's the same exact chords, two five one six, but um, in B, well. The rhythm is a bit different. As you can see, it's it it's the same thing but the rhythm is changed a bit. But you can see the resemblance. It's very much the same. You could even mash this song up with B if you wanted to. So I'll leave you guys up to that. But uh but uh, yeah. That's basically how the uh, the beginning of B was made. So let's see here. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention. In its real Minecraft B hours, um, I, as you can see here, the art style is very simple, and even the music too. So it's it's a really cool video that fits. Um, So, if you can hear in the music, they use like uh, base, basic uh, electronic instruments, you know, using the basic shapes like like sine wave, triangle wave, and sine wave, you know, those kind of stuff. So that's basically what I did. And even a Rhodes, uh, this one's not a real Rhodes, this one's a synth Rhodes. So yeah, that, that gives off more of the uh, basic electronic uh, feeling, you know? So here we have B. And we have the bass over here coming in, the second part. And of course, a bass drop, which is required, and I like to put in on most of my songs. And now, here we have the melody. That one, I I don't, I uh, I don't have anything to say about this. It's just something that came off my head. But yeah. And as you can see in the second part of the the uh, verse, if you could call it that. We have a uh, padded chip tune thingy over here. This one's uh, just a basic square wave. As you can see, all of these instruments are actually very basic. They're just using, as you can see, square wave, triangle wave, triangle wave, 12% uh, square wave, square wave, 25% square wave, 25% square wave. So yeah, they're really all of the instruments here are really really basic and in the uh, in the melody as you can see the second part has a uh, upper harmony which I like putting in in like uh, the second part of that verse 
I always do that when I uh, arrange music. There's always a an upper harmony part. So let me just solo this out. And what I also like doing in the second part is changing up the melody a bit so it's not exactly the same. So as you can see here, here's this first part. And in the second part, you can hear like a 16 note solo over here. I don't think I can even because I have really bad fingering, which I have to work on on the piano. But uh, anyways, go. that was very off topic. So there's that. And here in the uh, in this part, so in this song. Intermission. Intermission done. <laughs> so let's get back to what I was saying. So yeah, this this part over here. Um, this is actually from a song, or rather a sequence, since it's not a full song. This is from a sequence that I made in like 2019. It's called "You Were in My Room." And it goes like this. Oh wait. Okay, it goes like this. So I think it, it actually repeats, and this keeps repeating in a, in an infinite loop, or rather not even infinite, since there are, there's not an infinite amount of notes going lower at least. So yeah, that's uh, it, as you can see, there there's quite a resemblance, or a one hundred percent similarity. <laughs> From what I just played. So in the song, uh, you were in my room. Basically, it's that melody keeps repeating, uh, and goes down about three semitones for every uh, part. I say, as so, as you heard when I played, it went. We were in the key of A sharp, and it went down to. Or actually, it went up to C sharp, but the notes kept going down. So, so yeah, in the original, um, I don't know what I'm saying. Okay, so in you were in my room. Uh, there there are four keys that four keys that change in a loop that's um a sharp c sharp e and g and then it repeats but uh anyways i i just wanted to explain that because 
in this song B. It's pretty cool, but to make things spicier, how about have a key change in the song? So I decided, what's the best way to add a key change? Well, we can't just do like... And then... Well, I mean, if... You could do anything in music, basically, but... For my taste, I wanted to make something that... In my opinion, good in my ears. So... What is the best way to change a key? Of course, using that sequence. Oh wait, wrong chord. <laughs> Sorry, it's ghost. And... At first... So it goes like... And then it... changes here so originally I wanted to do like uh, and then it changed just to D sharp but I don't know I was that did not sound right to my ears at the time so I just did this epic maneuver so it's a two five and then a minor one and the minor one is a 2 for C sharp. So. And then goes back to A sharp. Uh, just like this. Alright, so as you can see here. key change and uh, in this part I like the melody in here because it does this cool solo with the fast notes heavily inspired by those um, solos in rainbow Tylenol and, and uh, artificial intelligence bomb because they have those like fast arpeggiated notes and I I just really like them they're pretty cool and one thing to note about the you were in my room part the chords go like this dun, dun, dun. instead of instead of four five three six because uh well you know it it just didn't sound right to me when when i did it's not it, it's kind of kind of tasteless so i just did I used the uh, 251 25 at least and uh, yeah I kinda don't know what I'm explaining anymore I ran out of brain juice but uh that there's that and it's even convenient because the um the chords start with with this so yeah that's very epic Oh yeah, and in this part, as you can see, we're in C sharp, and now in A sharp. So um, actually, so I, like I said, I wanted to do a key change. So here's the key change, and then in this part, I wanted to do a key a key change like this. So like. For example, let me do a uh, two, five, one, and then go down a semitone and change the minor 
uh, the major into a minor. So it goes, and then now we're in the key of G. So I wanted to do a key change like that, where you go down a semitone, and uh, chord is a minor. I don't really know how to explain that properly, but I hope you know what I mean. It's I actually grabbed that inspiration from Bill Wirt's song. Which um, I forgot which which song exactly, but I got it from that where you do a where you have like C F and then A sharp and then A minor D G. So I don't know. I I I just uh, I was just a fan of that key change, and I wanted to put it in my song. And actually, conveniently. So, so like it key change here, right? This is A sharp major, and now it changes to C sharp major. And conveniently, when I want to do the key change here, C sharp, and then, and then the semitone down, it goes back to A sharp. So, yeah, that's really convenient to me. Cause I was a I wanted to do that at the end anyways, so yeah, it just does it. Now we're in A sharp, and uh, of course when I moved to A sharp, I couldn't just do like it. Oh wait. I can't do that. That's. I mean. I, I I get music is subjective, but I wanted to make I wanted to put more color into it. So before the. Uh, I I decided to put an extra part. So that. The first note is a, uh, A sharp. Major, to complete the two five. Uh, two, five, and one. So yeah, A sharp, D sharp. This is a uh, common thing in music, where you go like tonic, and then it's just subdominant, tonic, subdominant. I've seen it in a couple of songs. I just can't name a few right now, but yeah. Oh yeah, and not to mention. Also, we have this epic arpeggiated 8-bit stuff, so let's listen to this. Yeah. This was inspired by a um, couple of NES games. I can't name a few right now because my brain is not working, but I can name one. Uh, Tetris. Uh, Tetris Type B, I mean Type C, if that's what it's called. But it uses this thing where it has a slow attack, and it's an arpeggio. And I I, I just like the uh, taste of that. It's really um calm for me. And. As a ballsy man, you know I had to do had I added I had to add I harmony to this. So here it is. And what I did actually So l let me put this here. What I did actually I could do this. This is like the harmony of this arpeggio thing. But you know I decided to do a little something like this, so it feels like there's more notes. Uh, this is a technique used in in NES games, because you know how there's just like four instruments on the NES, or five, including the DPCM sample. But uh, 
yeah it's very limited so this trick to do like the delay thing is very epic so yeah I took inspiration from that that's very cool oh yeah and in the melody I just did this because I I don't know um it it's been a year so I I can't remember what's going on my my head a year ago but yeah and then I decided to do something very sneaky well not actually really sneaky I'm sure if you it, it's very hearable if that's what you call it I put an epic um, lick over here and uh, and in the music video I th I think I added a text lick but uh, nobody has ever commented on that yet and I'm not even surprised because my audience age yeah that's basically it audience age no need to explain on that further but yeah there's the epic look I'm, I'm sure Adam Neely would um, appreciate that and goes back to this thing except except it doesn't have this part over here so dun 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 dun. I uh, removed that so you know it's uh, coming to an end and yeah that's basically it well we can talk about the instruments so in the melody let's check out uh oh I made it on beat as you can see I used a triangle as the lead and not a square wave which I've never seen act before yes I'm being bossy I'm using a triangle wave as the lead so what and it's a pure triangle it's not the trying the NES triangle so it's like a bit more clear and more filled with harmonics originally I would use a sine wave but it's at, it just doesn't sound good on your ears if it's that pure and it wouldn't um, stand out in the mix since well it's just a pure tone it's just one frequency so I decided to use a uh, triangle wave which is basically the sine wave but with more harmonics so that it can actually stand out as a lead instrument so yeah epic and I used a 12% uh, square wave as the harmony and of course pan to the right actually I, I, I didn't realize the lead is pan to the left a bit probably because you know I wanted the lead to go here and then the uh, the harmony to go to the right but yeah Yeah, I decided to use a 12% uh, square wave that's like filled with overtones and stuff. And uh, I did I did use a lot of that, um, what's that called? Partimento. <laughs> so we have a... Uh, a 51 millisecond portamento it's on mono so I can just as you can see and that just gives it more flavor you know because I like I, I don't like it having just flat so let me turn off the portamento actually or make it zero milliseconds 
for now. I don't know. It it just sounds a lot better and smoother when it's in a bit slower portamento. It, it it sounds smoother when it has a slide basically what I'm trying to say. Yeah, I love slide notes. They give flavor to the music. And it's not just bland. And of course, I'm I'm not going to make everything a slide note cuz I would you can't just have too much. So yeah, just certain notes have the slide note. Some notes that that really need it. Like So I guess that's about it for uh, for this v stream of me analyzing B, because I basically covered everything about what was going on in my head and uh, the accords, the keys, the modulations. <laughs> so. Yeah, I'm gonna call this the end of this stream. And... Well, thank you guys for watching. If you were here, we have Gaming Kitty Cat and Kitty Cat and AC. Thank you for stopping by in the stream. I hope you enjoyed, even if you didn't understand it. But I... Uh, yeah. Next... In the next video, I might be analyzing B2, and that might even be longer because there, there's a there's actually a lot of a lot going on music-wise in B2. Uh, a lot of jazz elements to it, because you know I I like jazz, but yeah, that's about it, guys. Um, thank you for watching, and see you guys next episode. Oh yeah, of course, we should have this as the in outro instead. Hold on, let me pull it up. Um, okay. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. Thank you for watching. <laughs>